Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today I'll be talking about the alcoholic beverages and signature drinks of Tamriel. What kind of drinks does every culture enjoy and produce? That's basically what we'll talk about today. And we'll even taste some, or rather my dear friend Mr. Christmas will taste some and rate them according to fan recipes along the way. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. So the alcoholic beverages of Tamriel, there's quite a bit of lore on this topic surprisingly enough, uh, so I propose that for this video we'll first go through some of the basics around Tamriel and then example some of the most famous drinks for each of the races. So first of all it seems that basically almost all of the races have their own variants of beer, be it in the form of an ale, a lager or a stout or any other type of beer. The difference between those types being the ingredients and how they are brewed. Uh, give it a google if you want to know more about the differences between beer types. For example we have both Nordic, Altmer and Breton ales. And considering almost every tavern in Tamriel seems to sell some kind of beer, we can assume that every race or every culture has its own beers. The same goes for wine, with basically every culture producing some form of wine from the exquisite vineyards of the Altman on the Somerset Isles to the rough berry wines made by the Nords. That said, while basically every race and culture makes beers and wines, there is one exception. And I will start with that exception because it's pretty interesting. The exception is the Bosmer or the Wood Elves. They generally don't make beers, wines or any other conventional alcohol, as alcohol is generally made by fermenting or distilling plants, fruits or even vegetables in some cases. But those of you who know a bit about the Bosmer will have spotted a problem here, because a lot of the Bosmer don't eat or drink anything made from plants, at least not while they're in Valenwood. This is because of an ancient pact called the Green Pact with their god Ifre, that oversimplified means that they will not harm the plants growing in Valenwood in any way. So agriculture to farm wheat for beer or picking berries for wine is out of the question. This is called the meat mandate by the way, which basically means that they can only eat meat. That being said, they did find a workaround. You see, fermenting, which is the process to use to break down organic matter like for example berries by microbacteria in order to end up with alcohol, can technically be done with more types of organic matter than just plant-based things, even if not all are as easy to make. Um, you know where I'm going with this. The Bosmer have themselves some absolutely horrendous sounding alcohols. Specifically they have Jaga, which is fermented pig's milk. But if you thought that that sounds disgusting, which I do, you will love hearing that one of their most common drinks is Rotmeth, which is a steaming hot brown liquid. It kind of looks like tea according to descriptions, but it's very bitter and it's a very salty drink and it's made out of fermented meat juices. I am reading this just before my dinner, I don't want to have my dinner anymore. Anyway. We also have Bosmer Ale, which they do have, but it's also made by fermenting meat. And I do not know whether it still qualifies as an ale at that point. Again, I'm not a beer expert. They also have themselves some mixes or cocktails, like the Dubious Comoran Throne, which is a cocktail with both Jaga and the pig's milk thing, and Rotmeth, which is the meat juice thing. If that doesn't sound delicious to you, I don't really know what does at this point. That said, all their alcohols are so horrendous that many Bosmer which are compliant with the Green Pact are pretty jealous of other races which can just drink whatever they want or even Bosmer that don't comply with the Green Pact. This has made it so that some Bosmers distill and ferment plants in secret. For example, some secretly ferment root clippings that make a tasty liquor and some secretly even ferment honey as well. But their jealousy is especially strong sometimes as some taverns in Valenwood tend to sell just any type of alcohol. But those Bosmer who follow the Green Pact simply can't buy those types of alcohol even though they're being sold literally in their town. It's pretty sad since the northernmost city of Arenthia in Valenwood is actually known for really good red wines and high quality brandies. But those are made by the other races living in the area, such as the Imperials who have occupied that city more often than not during the history of Valenwood. So those local products from Arentia are not made by the Bosmer themselves, but more by Imperials. 
That said, the reason that Arendia, the city close to Cyrodiil, specializes in red wines and brandy is again likely because of the Imperials of Cyrodiil who occupy the city for most of its history and who specialize in wines, brandies and whiskies in the lore. Actually, almost all of southern Cyrodiil is in the lore covered in vineyards, with at least in modern day Tamriel the most famous wine brands being the Tamaka Westwald wines and the Surly Brothers wines. But there are far more types of wine from Cyrodiil. For example, we have the red musket wine and the white sherry wine, and even mold spiced wines, as actually one of the features in the Elder Scrolls cookbook, that last one. Brandies and whiskies are also commonly made in Cyrodiil. We don't know exactly where they are made, but they are some of Cyrodiil's most common export products, as most of the brandies found around Tamriel are Cyrodiilic brandy. And then the most exported type of whiskey from all around Tamriel is also from Cyrodiil, and it's called Flynn, which originally in the lore of the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, it was a Cyrodiilic whiskey, but now some sources state it as a Morrowind native product. It's a bit weird how they handled this, but since it originally was a Cyrodiilic product, my friend Mr. Christmas, who I said will taste some of the drinks that I'm mentioning here, has made in a Cyrodiilic fashion some whiskey by putting some grounded Cyrodiilic spices from the Elder Scrolls cookbook in a medium range whiskey. I would tell you the brand, but that gets me demonetized as advertisement for alcohol, so I won't. So Mr. Christmas, on a scale from 1 to 10, how does our version of Cyrodiilic whiskey taste? I'm not much of a whiskey fan, so... I would say a five. Thank you, Mr. Christmas. And with that, let us go to Hammerfell, the land of endless deserts and glittering coasts. And of course, the Abyssinian Sea, which is basically the Elder Scrolls version of the Caribbean. Now, we have three known specialities of the Red Guards of Hammerfell. Next to regular wines and ales, which they make like everybody else. First, there's alcoholic kisher, which is basically a really sweet type of Arabic coffee in our universe. So with a lot of sugar and some ginger. To my knowledge, this stuff isn't exported by the Red Guards and it's only available in Hammerfell. Uh, anyway, I had Mr. Christmas taste this with some tasteless white liquor inserted into the quiche. So Mr. Christmas, take it away. What does it taste like? All right. it, smell it smells like uh, boiling vodka. Don't I'll try not to breathe as I do this. <laughs> oh, fuck. <clears throat> That's, <clears throat> That's not great, I'll tell you that much, but it's not bad either. Thank you, Mr. Christmas. I hope the next one is better. Now, next to the Kisha, the Red Guards also specialize in making rum. Specifically, we know that the island of Stros Makai, which is in the middle of the Abyssinian Sea, has quite a sizable rum export and is supposedly uh, one of the multiple rum exporters on the entire coastal region of Hammerfell, as a lot of the coastal regions also produce this drink favored by many a pirate. Now, we could not find any specific official or fan recipes for Red Guard rum, but we could get our hands on some rum made in the Caribbean. So I had Mr. Christmas take that as the best, you know, substitute. So, Mr. Christmas, take it away. What does it taste like? And please rate it out of 10 again. Now, this is good. <clears throat> I would say, uh, um, 7. Very nice. Now, the final Red Guard speciality seems to be some kind of bourbon, of which we know little else than that the Red Guards make it, but we don't know where, nor do we know to what extent they export it to other regions of Tamriel. The same goes for their whiskies, which they are also known to make, but apparently not on a very large scale, as the whiskey business is firm in Cyrodiilic hands. Now, one race that we know quite little about are the Khajiit. We know of some of their ales, we know that they have some rum production and some wine production, but their products, in terms of what stands out, is that most of them are very sweet alcohol, such as their cane mead, which is mead made from moon sugar canes. But what they seem to specialize in are cordials, which are redistillations of stuff like brandy or rum with fruit and herbs mixed in, uh, with their cordials being very sweet, just like the other stuff that they produce. Now, next up are the Nords. We know from Skyrim that the Nords mostly specialize in mead, with an endless amount of types and local flavors existing in the lore. But the biggest two brands around the fourth era are of course Blackbriar mead and Honingbrew mead. But in the lore, something which we don't see in the games, Nords also specialize in both alcoholic and non-alcoholic ciders, which is actually quite neat. Now, also wine is a type of wine produced in Skyrim, which is also a Nord speciality. It deserves a special mention among the wines as 
While in Skyrim in-game it really isn't all that rare, it hasn't always been the case and there's actually a really funny story with Alto Wine. You see, before Skyrim released in the lore, Alto Wine was super rare due to it, had the, it having special properties of being made in vineyards on lands with volcanic activities. Those lands likely being around where in Skyrim we see the geysers in Eastmarch. Now, the best brands of Alto Wine were so rare and extremely expensive that the Elder Council had a sort of monopoly on it and its trade, but even the Emperor having trouble to consistently get a supply. But they did acknowledge this in the lore, because in Skyrim we can find the book An Herbalist's Guide to Skyrim, which actually tells us that the Nords found a way to make this specific type of jasberry grapes used for alto wine to survive in other environments than just volcanic activity environments, which made the price of the product plummet as the market suddenly got flooded with alto wine. Pretty cool that they actually gave us an explanation for that, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that was some pretty interesting lore, in my opinion. Now, next up are the Argonians. Uh, the Argonians are quite an interesting bunch, because they have some quite ordinary drinks, but also some really weird ones. For example, they drink Thalui, which I did not pronounce correctly, probably. Which is actually a quite normal drink, because it's sweet rum made from sugar canes. But they also drink fermented snake sweat, snail gin, which is gin likely made with swamp snails, as the name implies, and phlegamwin, which is an alcoholic beverage made with swamp gases. If that sounds disgusting, it probably is. I couldn't convince Mr. Christmas to taste something like that. Now, next to these horrendous things, we know that Argonians also make ale and wines, uh, and likely some alcohols based on hist sap as well, but we don't exactly know anything about that. Now, we also know that Talon J, which is the Argonian bartender in Riften, actually makes mixed cocktails of sorts. Uh, some people have linked that to the Argonians specifically liking cocktails, since Talon says that he picked up his knowledge in a bar in Blackmarsh, but I think it's more likely that mixed drinks are popular all around Tamriel and that he just learned his skills at that specific bar and just brought that bar's specialities to Skyrim where cocktails are less popular as we do know that Nords like more simple alcohols. That said, the Argonians also have something which is called Mud Nectar which is an alcoholic drink made from rice and seaweed and likely, well, some mud because while I don't want to kill Mr. Christmas by having him swallow mud, I did want him to taste this, so we found a fan recipe on the Tumblr page Talviel's Kitchen, which uses chocolate instead of mud, which is probably much better. So, with chocolate instead of mud, how does it taste, Mr. Christmas? Pretty good, actually. Like, really good. And in terms of a score out of 10? 8. See, much better than actual mud. And uh, that said to the viewers, do be sure to check out Talviel's Kitchen. I put a link to her Tumblr and Instagram page in the description. She made her own whole Elder Scrolls cookbook with all kind of stuff that exists in the lore which she made recipes for. It's pretty massive and in my opinion a bit better than the actual Elder Scrolls cookbook since it contains something from all around Tamriel instead of just stuff in Skyrim, some Morrowind and some Cyrodiil. So yeah. Uh, check that out, it's also made by an absolute gem of a person as Talviel actually helped us with this video and gave advice on some recipe related things. So thank you very much and you viewers go check out her page. Because on that page you'll also find the next recipe which is the recipe for Sujama that Mr. Christmas will be tasting. With Sujama being a very very strong alcohol for Morrowind's Dunmer or Dark Elves. So Mr. Christmas, how does Sujama, one of the strongest alcohols of Tamriel, made by the Dark Elves, taste. Also add into the video that I'm uh, putting my life on the line for this. It's not great. It's really not great. It's like drinking a very sweet vodka drink with... Um, uh, with just a hint of the uh, fiery tequila or whatever you call it. I'm not a te tequila enthusiast. Exactly, it tastes horrendous because the fan recipe has four different liquors in it. Uh, so, apparently Sujama is supposed to taste really bad in lore, so that gets reflected pretty well in this recipe. In fact, in lore it's such a strong drink that it's one of the very few drinks that we know of that is consumed in shots in the Elder Scrolls universe. But since it only comes in single shots and is very strong, it's really one of the relatively cheapest alcohols to order on Tamriel, since it comes in such small shots. Now, other than Sujama, the Dunmer have Sheen, which is a may wine made out of comberries, and Grief, which is a brandy made out of comberries. 
We know that they make quite a lot of different types of brandy as well, but mostly small local brandy makers. There's no very large scale uh, manufacturer, at least not since the first era when the sixth house was actually very famous for making types of brandy, which was supposedly quite popular, supposedly was exported all around Morrowind. Now, one of their main ingredients to create alcohol with is saltris, which is a type of ingredient which we are believed to taste like rice, or at least brown rice. As such, they have matze, which is an alcohol distilled from saltris, which is a bit comparable to our real-world sake, which I could not have Mr. Christmas drink because of an allergy. But what the Dunmer also have is rice beer, which is, well, probably similar to rice beer from our real-life world. So we did get our hands on that. So, Mr. Christmas, what does it taste like? A bit disappointing. Um, it tastes kind of like a Budweiser. Um, like, watery. Uh, for all your American viewers, you probably sh shouldn't put that in there. But we are putting it in here, because we don't like censoring people. Alright, nice. Now, next up are the High Elves. Strangely enough, we don't know an awful lot about the High Elves or the Altmer in terms of their alcohol production. We know that they produce a lot, but not exactly what they produce. We don't know that. Like, we know that they drink the alcoholic methaglin, but what exactly that alcohol is or what it can be compared to in real life, we have no idea. We do know that they definitely like their wine and that Somerset is dotted with vineyards producing some of the most high quality wines from across the continent from almost every type of berry imaginable. They also produce some whiskies apparently and we know that they produce punch which is uh, comparable to our own world punch but we did not get our hands on that so Mr. Christmas will not taste it for you. Now finally we have the orcs and the Bretons left. The orcs we really don't know too much about uh, in terms of their specialties. We do know that they have ales, uh, we know that they have some form of wines, but other than that we don't know really what they do in terms of alcohol. We know that they produce Zinfandel, which is a sweet liquor made of berries and rose petals, which kind of seems out of character for the orcs. And they produce Grog, which is a sort of beer with bitter green in it. And they have Howl Water, which is a strong alcohol with mammoth dung in it. Amazing. Now, finally we have the Bretons, who are really nothing special in terms of alcohol. They produce wines and ales, with the only real highlight being that it seems that they are the only ones to produce port. Now, what's interesting is that the Reachmen, who are technically a different race, but are usually using the Breton template in games, do have some interesting drinks that they are known for. Specifically, they have Clef, which is a drink made out of fermented sheep's milk, uh, kind of reminding me of the Bosmer with their Jaga, but they also have some specific hard ciders made from wild apples from the Reach, which is pretty interesting. And that was basically all that we know of Alcohols of Tamriel. I do hope that you learned something today, and if you did, I hope you will consider returning for my next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week. But as usual, before I end this video, allow me to thank my top Patreon supporters, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Polarized Poutine, Athena Hyotis, King Chris, Bulge, Climber of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Sar Mikael, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive, and for that I am very grateful. That said, I hope to see all of you in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye bye.